Um, this is Encompass Live, and it is uh, Wednesday, April 29th. Um, today we have with us um, Amy and Sean Burrish. Is that Shane. Shane, I'm sorry. Amy and Shane Burrish, and they are from the... Uh, oh, we're asking your information. You are from the... The, the, from the Commission for the Blind and the Digitally Impaired, which is a state agency. And um, they're going to talk to us about assistive technologies to the blind and visually impaired. And Dave Ortley, uh, who is the Director of Talking Book and Braille Services at the Library Commission, is also here. And he'll um, also be contributing content. Um, so without any further ado, let me go ahead and turn it over to them. Go ahead. Thank you, Susan. I wanted um, Amy and Shane to tell us some things about themselves to, to begin with. So, Amy, why don't you go first? Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I have been blind uh, for my whole life, and so I'm a longtime borrower of, of books and several formats now over the years, from Braille to cassette and uh, record back in the day. Um, and now the digital downloads um, from the Talking Book and Braille service. I have a degree in psychology, sociology, and criminal justice from Peru State College. Um, Shane is my husband, and we have a three-year-old little boy named Noah. All right, and I'm Shane Burrish, um, and I also am totally blind and have been since birth. I used to have a little bit of vision growing up, but I have always been a borrower of the uh, talking book and braille service materials since I was in probably the first grade, like Amy. Uh, we were reminiscing before this conference started. Um, we go back to the record and flexi disc days and now all the way up through the cassette books and um, on into the digital download, which we uh, now do. I also went to Peru State College. I am an educator. So I hold uh, Nebraska certificates in teaching math, special education, and I'm also a certified teacher of what is called blind or visually impaired students, which is kind of a specification under our specific population of kids. Uh, but I work at the Nebraska Commission for the Blind, as was said before, as a home teacher. We call them orientation counselors, but essentially what that means is if any of you out there know someone who's blind or visually impaired, um, we can come out and um, help them to be independent through learning skills or sometimes acquiring equipment and things like that. And, and Amy is also works at the commission. She is a rehabilitation counselor. And um, so we also work with people who have lost their vision, who are losing their vision um, in the area of their vocational needs. So helping them to find employment or perhaps retrain if they've been an over the road truck driver and we don't have any techniques that we can get a blind person to, to do that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, sometimes it's a matter of, you know, retraining and those kind of things. But uh, what we're really here today is to, and I'll turn it back over to Dave, but is to talk to you about some of the ways that blind people can access print and things, so. Thank you, Shane. We have a number of gadgets that um, uh, Shane and Amy brought with them to demonstrate and to talk about. Uh, with something called the KNFB Reader is first on the list. So why don't you show what that is and uh, we'll talk about it. Sure. Um, the uh, KNFB Reader is um, well, at first, it stands for Kurzweil, which is Raymond Kurzweil, um, in partnership with the National Federation of the Blind, which is the oldest and largest uh, consumer group of uh, blind individuals um, speaking and organizing for themselves. And so it was a partnership that developed this really cool piece of technology. Yes, um, I don't know if any of the libraries out there, any of the people in the audience have ever had the like Kurzweil reading machine. The, it was big. <laughs> it, it was big. It was probably it was the, big as a cabinet. Yeah, it was like a jumbo Xerox machine. Yeah. Right, and and that was I believe invented in like 1974, yeah. and it cost a fortune too. <laughs> it, it certainly did. One of the the side benefits of that, um, it was invented by, as Amy said, Raymond Kurzweil, and that machine is the predecessor to the device that I have in front of me now, but. Um, it 
essentially invented the whole idea of op optical character recognition or OCR, which we use in pretty standard, um, not only in the blindness field, but you know, in your day-to-day -day office setting or library setting where you're scanning print and turning it into electronics. And so that technology was actually invented in 1974 um, for that reading machine. And it was the idea that you could take pictures of print and then have a database inside that could turn them into um, the text that they were and it would know what that was. And then the next step was to then verbalize that through a synthesizer. And you can see that over the years, it went through several generations, but it's now down to um, a piece of software that's put inside of a, a Nokia phone. So this is really a standard um, Nokia N82 phone that you can do all the functions of the phone, um, especially if you put an extra piece of software on, which this one does not have. Um, then you can read all the menus and do your internet browsing and text messaging and all those things. I, on this current one here, I just currently have um, the piece of reading software, which is the Kurzweil technologies inside of it. So I've started the phone, as you may have heard earlier, and now I'm gonna boot up this software. Did you want something to photograph a piece of? Yeah. Here's, here's a print. Here would be one on them. Um... These are pieces of uh, printed material that Dave's provided. We have no clue what they will be. We haven't seen this before. Yeah, this is the acid test right here. I'll put it in front of you. I'm make sure that I... From Living Well Magazine to give them due credit. Okay. The first Kurt Kurzweil reader I saw was a large piece of furniture. The second one I saw was something that was half held holdable, and it was probably like a, a fair sized camera. The one that Shane has was fitting in, in, in your pocket. Yeah. Because it, it, it's a Nokia phone, essentially, that's it's been modified. Yeah. Have we gotten a decent picture of it? Uh, let me move the camera a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I think. Yeah, we have. All right. Yeah. So I'm going to fire this up here. Hello, I'm the cat. Our theory is your mobile. I'm going to plug this into a set of external speakers, is all I'm doing, so we get a better volume out of this thing. Hopefully, anyway. All right, so I'm just going to, is this slide pretty much text, Dave? Yes, it is. Okay. It's mostly text. Um, one of the things, I am totally blind, and one of the things that is really cool about this is that um, Dave could have handed me this magazine upside down. Um, this uh, software not only converts stuff into text and then into speech, but uh, it uh, also can correct for all kinds of errors um, since the person might be uh, totally blind and have the um, text upside down and those kind of things. But we literally just kind of are snapping. We're using the digital camera feature that the phone already has, and we're going to snap a photo of this page. Take a picture. And once that flash has gone, I can... Literally, uh, processing picture inputs, articles and labels format. I can allow the uh, reader to go ahead and Camera interpret what it saw. Counterclockwise relative to the page. It told me that I had a two degrees rotation, which would tell me if I had chopped off maybe some of the text in, you know, at the margins. Plus T is a L. Don't know who to call to FMD outcome to obtain services that could help you. Stay in your own home longer. Look no further. Lincoln Area Agency on Agum Life Counselors can assist older adults by answering questions and referring them to service providers for various needs including in-home services, long-term care, funding options, information on Medicaid waiver certified facilities or Medicare Part D, and a number of other items. Go ahead and finish it. Please wait. Finish out its sentence there. Um, there were just a few errors in there. One of the things that happens is with this little, uh, your like your folds or your little bubble in your margin, um, it also can deal with lighting. And this is kind of a glossy material too. Do you have another sample of something, Dave? We can. But but you can see for the most part, it is fairly error-free, really. 
Um, this is a book, University of Nebraska Press, called Passion and Principle. It's the story of John and Jesse Fremont, the oh, uh, wow. Fremont, Nebraska fame. Yes. I'll put this in front of you. Now, it does have a fold in the book. But that should be okay. That should be all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see how that's going. a little easier with books than I think. Sometimes. Yeah, less, less graphic. So. Tricky part but sometimes. One of the things I do to correct for that that error, that rotation error, is you'll see I'm actually kind of tactually lining the um, camera up on the book before I go ahead and raise it. And I'm going to go ahead and snap the photo here. Parental test. Press down the okay. Cancel again. Ready. Parental text. It's still wanting Ready. to read the uh, previous photo we took. There we go. I think it should work now. Take a picture. So while it's going and processing that, I'll Process kind of explain. Um, the power of this machine too is that, you know, we can, like Dave said, take this in our pocket somewhere. We can also take pictures of text in any direction. So that could be a plaque on the wall or a sign on a door um, since it is so mobile. That's what gives it power over like a flatbed scanner that you might also scan this book on. Um, so it... Oh, push head the east and stack. The path finder is life 1840 to 1844. End of the med set off with it. TL with the middle AD of the state and remaining equals at 13,500 on a measured CACL second to the end. Yeah, I didn't do very good with that, that page. It's 14%. Processing cancelled. It has. Ready. You, you, you can adjust it, is that? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Does it matter what, what, what kind of typeface you're using? Not not really. It cannot do um, handwritten materials. Um, it does need to be text. It can it can compensate for a lot of, of fonts. I would say the closer to your standard you know, aerials and things like that. Aerial it, Times Roman, aerials, the more standard mm -hmm. book fonts. And, yeah. Um, it does have software, or I mean, as part of the software inside, it does try to compensate for colors. So we can also do things like labels on, you know, um, or packaging in the home, like cake mixes and things like that. You can try to read the directions and things. So it, it tries to compensate for contrast of different colors of print on different types of, um, you know, backgrounds and things of that nature. But um, as you know, with most things in the OCR world, you know, the closer you get to the standard black on white or white on black and and um, standard fonts, it, it does do a little bit better. Um, but it's certainly um, a device that I could see a library having so that a, a patron could sit down and, you know, browse through a book. You're not going to probably browse the shelves of books with it to find a book. That'd be too time consuming as you can tell how long it takes to recognize the text and things. But a person certainly can um, sit down with it, or like in our own homes, we sort out our mail, you know, and throw away all the, the junk ads we get and stuff before our readers come. And I know that's later in the presentation, we're going to talk a little bit about that. But anyway. you know, the, the first time I saw a, a model like, like Shane's, one of the bombs came in and said, Come out of my office, I might. I want to show you this. So I did. And he was just thrilled. He said, I could read my own. Uh, mail this way, I can read my medical uh, uh, bills and whatever. And this man had dyslexia. Mm -hmm. He wasn't blind, he had dyslexia, so it had mm -hmm. a broad, broader application than blindness. But yeah, they're getting better all the time. Oh, by the way, in, in case you're saving your pennies, it's $1,595 is, is the listed price. So they don't give it away, but it, it, could, it could be worse. Right, right, and they're, they're, um, it can be obtained from the National Federation of the Blind, which their website is nfb.org. We also have um, a company up in Omaha that is a distributor in Nebraska for this device, which is accessibility.net, um, and the man there is Patrick Fisher, is the owner of that company. So if you need more information about that, you can contact us at the commission, which I know will be giving out that information later, or, you know, any of those dealers, too. 
So. Well, by the way, if you have any questions, just bring them up as as they um, as they uh, uh, occur to you, because we we, we want to keep moving, and we'll, we'll lose you unless you ask your questions as, as they arise. Let's talk about the Victor Reader stream. Okay. You got one of those too, huh, Shane? I do. <laughs> what do you, you know? You want to no. introduce that, Amy, while I'm kind of sure. switching chords here and stuff? Yeah, sure. Uh, the Victor Reader stream has been, next to the KNFB Reader, probably uh, one of the coolest uh, inventions to, to come along um, in in terms of giving us access to printed material and any kind of um, things in audio format. Um, it's an accessible MP3 player, so um, a lot of students now have this and take it around their college campuses um, with a, a small SD card. Uh, you can have your music on there. You can have your textbooks, which you can download from Recordings for the Blind and Dyslexic, as well as books that are available uh, for download through the NLS library system, which we'll talk about here in a minute. But um, I, I think you're able to see it there. It's a very, again, a very small piece of equipment. You know, uh, back when Shane and I were in college, we had um, larger tape recorders, even a little handheld, they called them handy cassettes at the time were still, you know, fairly good size. We had boxes of cassette books um, and, you know, lots of equipment. It was a lot of fast forwarding, rewinding. If your professor said go to page 200, you know, you'd, you'd have to look at a little braille index that told you what cassette that it was on, pull that out of the box, and then fast forward till you heard a short beep, which meant the beginning of a page. A long beep was the beginning of a chapter. And, you know, so it was yeah, a very complicated time process. For you too, because the class is done to stop. Yes, yeah. that's right. And now, with just a touch of a button, you can, you can uh, type in the keypad 200. It'll instantly take you to page 200. Um, you can jump really easily by paragraph, by uh, page, chapter. So it's a very um, easy to use, uh, very um, and, and less time consuming to, to navigate around in books as well. So it's a very, very cool piece of equipment. All right. Are you wanting me to also talk about the NLS project at this time, Dave, as I show this, or how do you... The webs, yes, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, well... The, uh, you mean the Bard? Yeah. The direct down Well, because down I, I, I was going to show one of those books, I didn't know okay. if, how you wanted to organize it, but... Welcome to Victor Reader. Okay, this, um... Please wait. Device... Text files. Bleachers by John Grish of VRF. And you just, if you, if you were able to hear it, you just heard an example of both types of speech that this device has. Again, um, this is a very multi-purpose device. Um, it has aspects of it where a pre-recorded human voice does a lot of the descriptions of, you know, as you depress buttons and things like that. Um, it uh, uses an SD card inside of it, which is very, you know, standard today if you use a digital camera or anything like that. You know, it's the size that's about like a postage stamp. The card I have in there now, I believe, is 16 gigs um, of information, which you can hold quite a bit. Um, it could be like a whole, whole library. You can probably have, a, 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 what, a, maybe 50 books or more on that. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Maybe more. Yeah. yeah, maybe more. Um, because, and and so the the structure of this device is much like a, like if you look at, you know, a directory on the computer through Windows Explorer or something. So there are pre-recorded um, um, sections that a human voice says, like talking books and music, podcasts, text files, notes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but then once, so we can both do audio things like like your iPod, you know, we can put music and, and um, all kinds of file formats on there. We can also um, do um, text though, which is what I was in right now. 
And um, so that would be like a document that would come up from Microsoft Word, perhaps, or a person's email or, you know, any kind of an electronic document. As long as you make it into a text file, it can be placed inside this Victor stream and read aloud. So that's really um, important for students today. Sometimes we can get electronic copies of textbooks um, and then they can be rendered into here and read with the synthesized voice. Um, I'm going to give you a, a brief example of that right now. Um, and it's going to be, and it's a synthesized voice, so it's probably going to be pretty difficult to carry over um, the audio here, I'm sure. Life is a physically handicapped. Our National Braille Press Incorporated, 2004. This is the Braille edition contains the entire text of the print edition. Copyright 2003 by Del Free Holdings, Incorporated. Blue jacket information I on. High school all and Jacob and Neely Crenshaw was probably the best porch that ever took place of the legendary Lucina Sparks. 15 years have gone by since the HTH glory days, and Neely had a count. Okay. Um. This was actually the book jacket from the John Grisham novel, Bleachers. Um, and I didn't want to confuse things, but what is really cool is there's an aspect of the um, National Library Service Talking Book and Braille um, services, which is called Web Braille. Um, and those are electronic Braille files. We'll probably talk about that later. But this was actually not only a text file that can be put in there, but it was actually a Braille file. And so this machine knows how to take the braille and make it into speech. So what well you as heard it. was synthetic speech, not human voice speech. Just right. Now I'll give you, as I go through these folders, I'll go up to the talking book section on the Victor stream um, where you could put both National Library Service audiobooks. Um, and then I'll go show you another folder where I have some um, audiobooks as well that are just, you know, standard from CDs or whatever, or you might get from one of those services like Overdrive or something. Bookshelf, text files, 33, books, 3. Leaders by John Grisham, the notes, 4. So notes. now you're hearing human speech. Other books, 13, books, 1. Commentary movie. Okay, now what I'm in now is the talking book section. This is an audio, um, file that I digitally downloaded from the Library of Congress. Uh, the same books that we now get on cassettes and are converting to the digital um, format. I, have you talked about that on these um, Encompass things before, Dave? We had a demo and we showed them the, uh, the barge side. Okay. So, yeah, as of now, I was able to download those files and put them into this Victor stream, and then I have some degree of navigation. I'm actually going to go to the next book here because I have a little more navigation in there. Two. How the states got their shapes. Okay, so because these are, you know, the digital files from the the audio books that NLS is doing, um, they're human voice. And we have all kinds of navigation capabilities, very similar to what you would have like on an audio CD's tracks where you skip from song to song. We call that DAISY formatting. I don't recall what that acronym stands for. It's digital something or other. Yeah, I have it written down. I, I can dig and find it, but it is. Um, and, and so essentially, like the chapters and the sections, and the various paragraphs and things can all be navigated very easily. So for the first time ever, we're able to really jump through the books much like a sighted person would. And I'll show that. This book that I'm going to give you a sample of is called How the States Got Their Shapes. And it's a text about that very thing. So there are, you know, it's laid out by states and then sometimes subsections. And so that will give you a really good example of, of how if I wanted to look at, you know, why is Nebraska the way it is, I can jump through there very quickly, much like you would be able to leaf through with print. And that's something we never had in um, the audio cassette days. Now, certainly we could do that with Braille text that we had, but we've never really been able to do that in the audio world before. Initially, the Nebraska Territory was huge. I was already on Nebraska. It extended north all the way to Canada and west all the way to Punjab. One, mid-level. Two, the continental divide and the Rocky. Nebraska's western border. 
1863, Nebraska's northern border revisited. Now I'm going by like sections or little subsections. If I go up to another level here, what they call level one, I actually will go by state. I'm making Nevada, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico. How come New Mexico has all those steps along its southern border? Now we'll go back to Nebraska. Nevada, Nebraska. How come Nebraska lost its southwest corner to Colorado? And why are Nebraska's northern, southern, and western straight line borders located where they are? Great questions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I want to give you a brief. I want to give you a brief sample of of just so you know the capability of these machines and how the typical person who's fairly experienced with them, like myself or Amy, would use them. I am reading at the natural rate that it would be if you put that file into um, the player, or in other words, the same rate that the person was reading as they read aloud and it was recorded. But we have the capability within this machine to speed up the audio to do the equivalent of a person being able to speed read and print. It's something we do a lot to get our overall reading rate and comprehension up when we're you know, doing particularly materials in school or whatever. Um, what is really awesome about this technology though is being digital, we can speed up the audio and keep the actual tone and pitch of the person's voice the same. In the cassette era, when we would do that, you were obviously turning the reels of the cassette quicker and it, was, and it would raise the pitch. So we all got used to doing that but it would, you know, people would be like, why are you listening to your books like Mickey Mouse kind of thing, you know? Um, so I want to show you this briefly because um, you're not going to be able to understand it probably very well because the average person can't when they first hear this. But I want to give you a taste of how we would actually, how I would actually read this book. Because right now it's very slow to me and it's kind of driving me crazy. Nebraska looks like a nice enough state. Speed, tucked away in the middle of America. Who would suspect that in a younger and more territorial So you can see how much more quickly we can cover a book um, by being able to do that. And students who are blind learn, learn to speed read like that. Yeah. And, you, and you still do sometimes change them. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. I remember my parents used to think, you're not really doing your homework, you're just, you know, playing around or whatever, because we would put the things that, you know, really fast Crazy. speed yeah. through it all. Now, but. DAISY stands for Digital Accessible Information System. It, it, it's the system that covers all of the copyright protected books for the blind program. We would demonstrate Bard Live, but it's down today because it's left its pilot phase yesterday. Today's the down day. Tomorrow, Bard reopens it as a permanent site with some enhancements. And since October, Bard is, has been attracted and signed up by 5,700 uh, people who use talking books. Um, 5,700 people have to buy their own players, for instance, and so they have that much invested in that. So it's, it's, I think it's been a real success yeah. story. It's a great, we're excited. <laughs> yeah, it's going to take off, so it'll be even yeah. more. Yeah. Let's talk about, um, let's talk about Bookshare, bookshare.org. That's one of the sites we, we bookmarked. It was started by um, Jim Fruchterman, and Mr. Fruchterman was a rocket scientist. That's, that's the true story. And right. he, he left that career and he started working with accessibility software. He came up with Arkenstone scanners, which was a scan and read system that dominated the field for, I don't know, maybe a decade perhaps. And that was bought by Freedom Scientific. And with the proceeds, he started the Bandit, Bandit Tech Foundation, which is this website. and. And Bookshare is, is one of his uh, programs under Banditech. Want to talk about Bookshare, one of you? And yeah, are, are we, and we're seeing the site now. Is that right now, okay. it's a book without barriers, and it, mm -hmm. it talks about it a little bit. So. Um, do you want to, or do you want me to? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, essentially, th this is a really um, 
awesome concept that in the world of publishing and stuff, it's really great that it was able to come to fruition because essentially what, what has gone on here is that um, using some of the same, you know, copyright um, legislation and things where, um, you know, we're able to get access to things because they're in an accessible format, people are able to share um, content with one another because they have to be signed up and, um, you know, proven that they have you know, a physical disability. Now we're mainly talking about blindness here today, but Dave made a great point earlier that I had kind of forgot to stress is that a lot of these devices are like the KNFB reader, the Victor Stream, are oftentimes used by people who just have, they're sighted, but they have print disabilities. And that's a population I think we sometimes forget to acknowledge quite as often as we should um, for these kind of technologies. But anyway, um, essentially books share is like it sounds. Um, there are thousands of books that are on the site that can be um, downloaded and used by the people who are subscribed to the service. And again, they have to qualify for that. But what is really kind of revolutionary about it, particularly at the beginning of its time, was that the share part of the book share, and that is you know, using scan and read technology, um, people were able to scan in books that they had in their own homes, um, thereby contributing to the overall um, catalog that was available. And it also, you know, there was a, there's a program by which, you know, if you contribute X number of books, your subscription fee goes down, you know, and so on and so forth. But what is really cool is the books um, are, I believe pretty much all available in braille format and um, they're also available oftentimes in audio or that daisy type format which we showed you how you can navigate them and things so people are able to download the books they can print them out on embossers so that they get actual hard copy braille paper under their fingers um, they can be put into um, refreshable braille displays machines that have um, braille displays and um, or listen to and so um, the community has and the, this project has grown to the extent that they actually I believe they're a nonprofit but they you know actually have a staff that go over the files you know if I'm in my you know house and I contribute a file you know um, I rate what quality I think it came out after it was recognized by the you know, scanner and things, but they have people that go over those files to try and, you know, clean them up a little bit and increase the quality and things like that. So um, it is a, it's a tremendous project that um, gets even more books into our, you know, into our hands. Now we're looking at a list of books. We're saying things like Black Beauty and some of the classics. Some of the more, more recent books are listed also. So it includes um, the classics plus modern books. There are 45,000 subscribers to Bookshare. I think it's, what, $25 set up and $50, $50 a month? A year. A year. A year. Now, there's the grant so that all students, K through college, are, are, are covered, though. So there's no Correct. cost to them. Right. Yes, they received a grant from the Department of Education. So, yeah, any, any um, K through 12 or higher ed student um, can... Uh, can use the service for free while they're in, you know, that stage of their life. And when, when you download, you either have a Braille file, file or, or else you have synthetic speech. Correct. One of those two. Yep, mm -hmm. that's right. And, and the files have gotten quite, quite, quite a bit better. They're, they're cleaned up. The accuracy is, is near perfect. Now, what does it mean? I'm looking at a list that they say New York Times bestsellers. Uh -huh. And it has its author, the title, and then there's a download column, and there's nothing in the download column. Oh. I believe that, and I could be wrong on this, but I believe that's because we're not logged in as a subscriber. Uh -huh. So what it is is that it allows a person... Um, well, like many of the people probably listening to this who are librarians or something, they could help a person resource whether a book is available on Bookshare, but because you have to qualify with a print reading disability, those links would appear in that column if you were logged in as a subscriber. Yeah, I think that's so, so the titles that we saw on the most popular list that did have 
different file formats that you can download were probably the public domain. Right, I believe so. I believe so. Yeah, people have to use a password. They have to prove that they're they qualify because of disability. That they do pay the fee, and then they have to use a an ID and a password, don't they? Yes. So they, they're just concerned about the the newer books under copyright. So there is that that they comply with the shape in the JJP amendment for the copyright provision. Yeah, book share is, is up, up and coming, and it's um. Mr. Fruchtemann is one of the great minds in, in the whole field of blindness. Absolutely. When we move on to uh, Web Rail, you mentioned that before. Mm -hmm. We can bring up the MLS site. I did want to point out Rail Book Review. Let's see if I can hold it up. <clears throat> you may know of Talking Book Topics. That gets talked about a lot. Talking the topics lists of brand new books on an audio format from Library of Congress. Right now it would be cassette, but soon it, it will be flash digital cartridges as well as cassette. Well, its counterpart is Braille Book Review, the newest books in Braille. And I, I did find some I wanted to see if we can just look up. Um, it would be the, um, the NLS web uh, uh, catalog site. Is, is that book market? To Yes. You did okay. And that's my fault. It should be on the screen NLS when Braille, but I'm so used to typing NLC that I uh, mistyped it there. Oh, uh, yeah. It's easy to find. Just set, set your browser on National Library Service, and when that page comes up, click on Search the Catalog, and that takes you right there anyway. So, two easy steps. And it will list all the books, including Nebraska's own studio books, are listed in the catalog. Yes, try that. That should do it. All right, under keyword, I'm going to give you um, BR space 17455. There's a new book. It's the Al Gore book about global warming called An Inconvenient Truth. There it is. It's in one volume, um, and it, yeah, um, no, it's in two volumes. So that real book requires two volumes, which means two two downloads. Now, Amy brought along a pack mate. Let's mm -hmm. let's bring that into the conversation now and explain uh, what that does and how that feeds into to okay. Braille. Uh, pack mate is a. Um essentially like a, a PDA or a, or a Palm Pilot that you might use, um, but it also has the, the capability to, um, you know, has SD card slots, that kind of thing. So you're able to um, read all kinds of various materials on here. It has a, a keyboard, um, as you can see, similar to uh, a QWERTY, you know, laptop keyboard, so it looks like that without the screen. Um, but it has a braille display here. It got a 20 cell or 40 cell, and you've got the 40 cell. I have the 40 cell, cell which is um, the equivalent of, a, of the size of a, of a paper, a piece of a sheet of paper. And uh, uh, you can navigate around here and then read the text uh, on the braille display. Um, and have uh, uh, books in here. You can also use the synthesized speech um, capability that it has. It drives me insane. I prefer to just, I've been reading Braille since before kindergarten, so I um, very much prefer the Braille and the speech kind of drives me a little nuts, so, so um, I, I turn it off. But. I was reading that the, the pack mate has a number of applications, including Braille display. Most people buy it because of, of the Braille display. Yeah. Isn't that correct? Yes, and the Braille display is also detachable. So, for instance, um, if a, if if the, um, the the right equipment was there at the computer, or went on a page, could maybe bring it into the library, um, and you know connect the Braille display to a computer and have a accessibility to some materials that way. Um, you can um, you know so. The Braille displays on their own, if you were just to purchase a, a standalone Braille display, is, you know, you're looking at probably, I don't know, between six to maybe 10,000 or so. Yeah, and this device is just under 2,400 yeah. listed, so. It's, it's dropped down. A, each piece of technology, you know, um, as as it is with most things, you know, you think back to even what a VCR cost, you know, back in the, 
you know, early 1980s to, you know, what they were um, just a few years ago with the, you know, advent of DVD. Everything eventually goes down in price um, as it becomes more common. And, and the same is true with these all of these pieces of technology that we're showing you today. They do decrease um, as time goes by. Now, you, you can compose something, a paper or a letter, and save it, and then you can read it back in Braille. Is that right? That's you correct. Can edit it if, yep. if you want to. You, you can, um, and you can then um, transfer that, or, or I don't know, you say download it, or you know, send it to your PC. Um, most of the the time, um, what these pieces of equipment uh, we call them note takers. What they're really the the best for is you know, writing down brief um, notes, kind of getting maybe the outline of a paper or something. Um, but I probably wouldn't do the whole editing and all of the work on here because um, it does have internet capability on here as well. So, um, but it's it's slow and kind of limited. So it certainly does not take the place of a, of a PC or a laptop or that kind of device, but it does give you some more options to, to begin the work. And then, um, you know, I would, probably do the fine-tune editing, um, especially as a student on, on the computer, but it does allow you to do that. There's a calculator on here, a clock, um, um, a stopwatch, um, media player, so you can, can listen to um, books and as well as read them. What else? Can you download a book from the NLS website, a Braille book, and, and read it on, on your Braille display? Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Yep, you Which certainly can with, with a... Um, what we do is we download it into um, on an SD card, which, um, like we have in the Victor Stream now, and you can well, place it, has, it in has here. It has a place for an SD card it does. on the top or something. Yep, it does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, the, the web braille files that you download um, are obviously electronic, but they're also braille files, meaning um, they've been ran through a special program that has converted them into the Braille code. Um, so if you had a string of text, you know, it's been um, translated, we call it, into uh, the Braille code. So those files that are downloaded from the NLS Web Braille uh, can very, like, well, immediately be put onto a card and then read it one line at a time, but still in a hard copy Braille format, just as if you actually had the physical books um, in front of you. Uh, they can also be, though, um, embossed out from the computer. So you True. can actually have that. The hard copy paper. The file that you downloaded from the NLS web Braille, you can actually emboss that out onto paper with, if you have a specialized embosser. Um, which is essentially the Braille equivalent of a printer. Mm -hmm. um, we call it embossing since it's making a tactile marking on the paper. But anyway, we often don't do that because it's like this book, you looked up the hours, um, two volumes. So I'm guessing that would be probably two or 300 Braille pages. And so we, we often wouldn't necessarily do that, you know, unless we, we wanted to, you know, to, to keep it or something. But we would probably prefer to read it on a device like the PacMate mm -hmm. electronically. And it has a space issue as well. And you can put right. it more, 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 port more portable this way. So. That's right. right. And the PacMate is just one uh, device. There are a couple of others. Uh, Braille Note, which is made by Humanware. And then um, the Braille Sense. Sense, which is made by a company called GW, GW Micro. Micro. Right. Yeah, and so and you they're, can they're also all, they're all essentially for those of you who this all seems so foreign to, they literally in in terms of the guts for the brain of it, they literally are um, PDAs or like your your you know iPads or your Palm Pilot style um, devices and so that's what Amy was getting at is you know somebody wouldn't sit down and, and compose a novel on their iPad using a stylus so even though this has a keyboard and it's a little bit easier to get information into it it's still for computing power and things it's essentially just a, a handheld PDA 
It just looks larger. Yeah. <laughs> it the, doesn't have a stylus. And the three that we mentioned, the Braille Sense, the, the Braille Note, and the Packmate, um, they're they're just kind of like Ford and Chevy. You know, they're just different brands, different versions of similar things with a few different features. Um, but, um, you know, having been blind for our whole lives, it's really nice to see now that there is some competition and some choice um, where there used to not be um, as much. You kind of had one company, one you know, product to work with, and now you are able to make some choices about what's going to be the best um, for you. So that's very exciting as well. That's one of the changes that we've seen in the last mm -hmm. maybe decade. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about NFB Newsline, and it has a related program called Newsline in Your Pocket. Yeah. Newsline has been around um, uh, since um, the late 1990s um we got newsline in nebraska um in 1999 um it was a uh, a dream a long time dream of um, dr kenneth jernigan who was a long time president of the national federation of the blind to make newspapers easily accessible um to the blind and for us to be able to read them when we wanted to and be able to navigate around um jumping by sections articles paragraphs, you know, just as a sighted person would when you skim the paper every day. So it started out um, as a service um, free to those, again, that qualify who who are blind or visually impaired um, with a reading disability. And um, you call a, called a toll-free number. Um, it was helpful if you had a speaker phone, and the service is still available. Um, and just with a pushing buttons on your touchdown phone, you're able to jump around um, papers and uh, navigate through them. As I said, in Nebraska, started in 1999. We had three papers originally, the USA Today, Washington Post. Chicago Tribune. And I think then we got the Lincoln Journal Star very early. Um, now we have five Nebraska papers that uh, are available. And the Carnegie Hub is on there, the Grand Army um, Independent. Omaha World Herald, um, the Lincoln Journal Star, and the, the, well, the Nebraska Associated, the Associated Press. Press is available. Okay, that's right. Um, okay. yeah. And the UPI, too. Yeah, and the UPI. Um, but since the days of just using uh, your touchtone phone, we've, again, um, sort of grown with the technological times. and. Um, it's a, you can download papers and put them on your Victor Stream, uh, which Shane has showed you, and um, as well as um, a new really cool um, website uh, feature as well. Do you, do you want to yeah, um, yeah, we can. Um, yeah, as Amy was saying, before the advent of Newsline, where you could um, do the paper over the phone, um, we had, and would these still exist, but, but the only way for a blind person to really get the daily newspaper was through a radio reading service. And so um, that's like it sounds, someone would read the paper. Um, again, this does still exist. Um, and it serves it serves a great market and a great purpose, but one of the issues with that is that um, uh, for folks like ourselves who, you know, are working eight to five, we're often not available when that paper is being read. So, right, because you so had this, a radio device. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, but you, you had a radio device. You had to turn it on. You had to be there at that prescribed time when it was scheduled um, for that reader to read it. And then the other thing with that, too, was that um, sometimes they would not read the entire paper. They would just read selected articles or sections. So you still weren't necessarily getting the whole content um and things that you may want to read out of the paper yeah and so that's where the concept of really on demand uh 24 7 came about and um, again um, we're talking about when we're saying the phone or now what we have in front of you the the website um we're talking about synthesized speech again is is the actual delivery um so a person does have to kind of get used to that that synthesize speech so yeah the the two new ways to deliver the newspapers and by the way there are 280 papers from across the nation so we highlighted the nebraska ones but anyone who is on newsline nfb newsline um does or is eligible to read from all the papers from all the other states so and there are also some periodicals too 
um, or like the AARP magazine and, and a few others. Yeah. But um, this web web interface is really really good because of the for several reasons. Um, people say, well, you know, there's a lot of papers now have websites. You know, you could go to the journalstar.com and read that, or um, the Carney Hub, or the Denver Post, or whatever. And that is very true. Um, even for a blind person, we have things called screen readers, and we can do that. But um, there's a lot of extraneous stuff, as you know, on websites. Um, and since this content is has already been approved by the papers to be delivered to this newsline service, the web interface for this is very clean. Um, it's literally just the headline and then the article in a really straight text format. So people with low vision or like ourselves, no vision listening to it, we're able to use our screen readers and browse um, the paper in a very straightforward manner where we oftentimes a lot of people get kind of clogged up in the, the traditional websites. And then the other device or type of service that's now new on here, as you probably are seeing up there, um, is NFB Newsline in your pocket. And what that refers to is a device like, again, like the Victor Stream here that we used earlier. Um, Victor Meter. Um, basically, what that is, is that's a piece of software that you install one time on your computer, and um, then you can designate up to six newspapers that are your favorites that you might read from every day. And you connect up this Victor stream through a USB cord, just like you'd use it on a camera or any other device. And um, it literally goes onto the web and grabs your favorite papers and pulls them into the SD card on the Victor stream. Or there's a couple of other players that will do that as well. But anyway, I did that before um, I left my office today. I'm going to go back up to the slow here. Talking three. Associated Press National Four. Associated. I'll go to the Lincoln Journal Star here. Associated. Six. Associated. Seven. Lincoln Journal Star Online throughout April 12, 26, 2009. Eight. Lincoln Journal. Nine. Lincoln Journal Star Online throughout April 3, 2009. I'm going to slow this down a little bit because I had sped it up for that other book. Speed. 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 Two. Speed. Zero. And now I'm on today's Lincoln Journal Star. 2009 and 0429. The notices with phrase. Acquired for copyright works. Line. Distributed in the phrase. Tonight. The information which follows is copyright notices. The title of this material. Skip over the disclaimers here. This material may only be lost. It's not going to be. 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 It's not going to
old, I bet they started early 70s, mm -hmm. one of the older systems. They also do, they, they read the local papers with volunteers doing live narration, and it's, it's recorded and, and rebroadcast later in the day, so you get two chances to hear different programs. They also have audio description, audio description where they go out to a, a community playhouse and they, they um, help to describe the play for people who are blind. And they also do something called the Listening Link, which is um, private recording programs for students or people who need quick recording of certain t um, books, uh, maybe uh, a, a guide to it in appliance or something. So they, they, they do that mm -hmm. service as well. How about the IID Mate? Five minutes to go. IID Mate Omni. This fascinated me. Talk about that. Yeah, this is awesome. This is pretty cool, too. Um, we have one of these at our house. Um, I have some some uh, groceries here, standard things you might find in your cupboard at home. This is just, it looks like a scanner, a barcode scanner that you might see in a grocery store. That's kind of the technology that it uses. One gigabyte covered with ID mode. Um, it says ID mode, so that means it's ready. It'll scan um, these household products here. Product. Cantaloupe's condensed soup. Chicken alphabet. It's our little boy's favorite soup, alphabet soup. <laughs> and um, it continues, so it reads the product. Package size 10.75 ounces, 305 grams. And uh, it can, uh, so that tells you that that's all. It doesn't have any more. Um, or it tells you that there has there's more information that's available, so you can keep going through manufacturer, manufacturer and everything. Um, we can try another product here. Okay. We'll try another product here. French vanilla. French vanilla. And there's Manu more information here. Manufacture. I'm jumping to the instructions. Tells me how to make it. Five minute pudding. One. The pudding mix into two cups. Go milk in bowl with wire whisk. Two minutes. Two. Or at once into individual serving dishes. Pudding will be soft set and ready to eat within five minutes. And so it's very cool. Um, there are some products um, that it may not recognize, but there are just thousands, and they keep adding to the catalog uh, all the time. You millions of actions. Like, like downloading a fresh database, what do you do to make it current? I think it'll come to you on an SD card. I SD believe. card, you started out. Okay. Um, I don't know if you. You actually, yeah, you actually purchase uh, the database periodically from the manufacturer of the device because they work with you know all these various companies and grocery store chains and things like that. I believe um, the latest database it has in, is like 2.7 million items in there. Um, but it, it even will recognize um, CDs and, and DVDs as well um, if they're if they have barcodes in them. When, when you go shopping, you take it with you to the grocery store or to the music store? Uh, you could, um, but it kind of would be cumbersome to pull everything off the shelf and okay. see if it, it reads it to you. So it's more, um, you know, we use it um, more just at home um, when we're bringing things home to make the braille label for them or to if they come it. off right and, and stuff, yeah. You can also customize labels. Do you yes. label things like appliances or, or maybe your clothing with that? You can. It comes with, um, with uh, create your own labels that you can um, iron on or, or, or sew into uh, garments, that kind of thing. And you can record this record feature. So um, you can make notes to yourself. You can also record um, and identify a product if it doesn't know it in its database. Yeah, they can. So. Well, I know like here at Lincoln City Libraries, because I investigated for a job once uh, for a blind person to be able to do, you know, they use a barcoding system. So I'm guessing that's probably standard in libraries. So those are unique barcodes that are not manufactured products, right. but a person could uh, record 
um, you know, you scan that barcode and then it says, hey, I can't find it in this database, you want to record it and you hold down a button and you say out loud, you know, this is Charlotte's web or whatever. And so we do use this in employment settings because then when that barcode is scanned again, it will match that up with that audio file. So we had a fellow, for example, I know who was working in a, in a manufacturing place where they did light fixtures and there was literally, you know, maybe 300 different kinds of screws and, you know, 200 different light bulbs and whatever. And we went through and um, made recordings of all those things. So when someone said to him, you know, you need to go grab the, uh, you know, XYZ size light bulb, um, he first of all knew about where that was in the plant, but then he could actually use the ID made as a way to um, find that and then keep himself on that job. Otherwise, he would have probably lost that job. So it has both an you know an employment setting too. So I think that's awesome. Uh, and we made a, a list for sources for Braille books, mostly children's books. I can mail these out, and anyone who wants to just let us know. And is there time to talk about children's braille? There is? Okay. About some children's braille with us. Different sources. Uh, I'll hold them up and you can tell what you want to about it. Uh, if you take a mouse to school, this is from the Canadian National Institute for the Blind. Uh -huh. But it's from Canada. I'm sure Noah would love that book. Yeah. It's one of the mouse books. Those are so fun. <laughs> if you give a pig a pancake or take a mouse to the movie, those are really fun. Nuffle Bunny put out by American Printing House for the Blind, which is an old Braille press in the United States. It was way back uh, just before the Civil War. And they're still cranking out books. Here is one, I think this National Braille Press called How Do You Know What Time It Is? I should say, if, if you don't know, Braille, a print Braille means that there is Braille inserted on clear sheets. So you have the, the regular print in the picture along with Braille. So, Noah can climb in and Shane's flat for story time, and Shane can read the Braille book, and Shane reads Braille, and Noah can see the print and see the pictures. Yeah. So it doesn't make any difference. We have sighted children, blind children, makes no difference. Yeah. There's expectations put out by the Braille Institute in Los Angeles. It has something called raised line drawings. I wanted to just show you quickly. Um, these are things you can, they're tactile images. Here's one of, of, of the leprechaun, and you can run your fingers and feel the actual lines. I don't know if, if Noah would like that, but maybe that mom and dad would. Yeah. <laughs> it is cool. And the last thing is American Action Fund for Blind Children and Adults put out a bunch of series. This is a Hardy Boy series for young adult readers. This particular Braille group was created back in 1919, but currently is housed in the National Center for the Blind in Baltimore with the National Federation of the Blind. But what do you folks want to add to, to children's Braille? Anything before, before we say goodbye? Just that, um, you know, there are resources out there again, like, you know, you could contact, you know, someone like us at the Nebraska Commission for the Blind. If, because these type of books that Dave are showing you, not only as he pointed out are commercial, but can often be made pretty easily too. So you can, you know, insert the braille sheets into a book that you might have. So if you ever have a patron that you introduce us to, you know, sometimes like where we have a three-year-old son, we sometimes make our own books at home. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, you know, you can look up resources on how to create those those kind of things um, right and and there's you know seedlings book is another um service there, there are just several which is why we have uh, uh, put together the list because you know um there are some books that you may want to just have to keep at home and so those are good resources to let people know about but i think just overall you know we really appreciate the opportunity um and although technology's come a long way it still doesn't necessarily take the place of a live reader for certain things so um, as we mentioned earlier, we still use one at home. We pay someone to come and read our mail and some various things. So there still is a place for that as well. Nothing can top the human voice, but through technology and the advances that have come about, it's opened up a whole new world um, of opportunity. And we're really excited about that because we were saying today that um, we probably have access to probably around less than 5% of, of all the books that are available, um, you know, and in print. Um, and um, 
as you know people who who like to read it's it's frustrating you know um we've made a lot of advances but there's for as many things as there are available to us there's still a lot that um that are not so um the kindle 2 is the latest of amazon's wireless reading devices it was released with the news that there is a text-to-speech feature the Authors Guild has raised an objection uh, indicating that audio rights are separate from print rights. What's at stake be 270,000 titles that blind people could access easily or not, so that's been a real controversy. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're hoping that things will work out there peacefully and not have to go to any legal action or any that kind of thing. Is there time for questions? Yeah. Does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask? We're a couple minutes late, but I think we're going to be fine. But does anybody have any questions they want to ask? Yeah, we're certainly willing to stick around if people want to ask questions. So. Um, you can, if you have a microphone, you can hold down the control key and ask it um, verbally, or if you type it in the text chat, I can read it aloud. We should give you the toll free number for the Commission for the Blind. Um, and that's 877-809-2419. And uh, you can call that anywhere in the state toll free and they can connect you with an office near you. We have uh, offices across the state in uh, Lincoln, Omaha, Norfolk, Kearney, North Platte, and Scottsville. We're getting some thank you messages. One person says, many thanks to our speakers for the insightful products they, dem they demoed. I would second that. Second one is um, thank you for a very informative presentation. You're most welcome. It's our pleasure. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Oh, and you've got people clapping. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 hey, we got the standing committee. Yeah. <laughs> this, is cool. yeah, thank you. this is cool. And Crawford. Thing. Yep, everybody claps. <laughs> Thank you very much. And um, I'm sure I can share with David, he can share with you the um, link to access the recording once sure. we get that available. So. Appreciate it. Great. Thank you.